Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some smaller test type questions which will be basically the size of what a multiple choice question can be, but we will not be looking at the multiple choice answers, we'll just be looking at the size of a problem that could fit into that format. First one says, if a firm forecasts sales of 244000 and it's break even, support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it uh, r 187 the margin of safety in dollars will be what so if we're talking about the break even what we need to know here of course is what is the break even point and what is the margin of safety Break-even point in dollars means how many units, how many dollars of sales do we need to have in order to not have income or loss, but to break even. So that point is going to be the 244,000. Um, um, I'm sorry, that point is going to be the 187,000. That's where we, that's how much sales we need to have in order not to have income, not have a loss. If we're estimating or projecting our sales to actually be 244,000. It might be useful for us to think, okay, what's the marginal uh, unit of safety? Um, margin of safety being the amount over the break-even point. So we'd say, oh, well, worst case, you know, if we have the 244 is what we're projecting to make in sales, that's a margin of safety over the bare minimum that we want to do to, in order to be making money, at least at the bare minimum. And that gives us a margin of safety of 57,000. During a recent fiscal year, a company reported pre-tax income of 128,000, a contribution margin ratio of 25%, and total contribution margin of 430,000. Total variable cost must have been what? So we're looking for variable costs. So we're gonna write out our calculation here. This is kind of like an income statement, but it's on a cost volume basis rather than on basically the way a normal income statement would be. So rather than revenue minus expenses, we're gonna calculate the contribution margin by having sales, which we don't know, they didn't give us sales, less the variable costs, which is what we're looking for. So they didn't give us that, of course, either, which is kind of disturbing. We would like to have one of two of those, but that's okay. And then we're gonna have the contribution margin. They did give us that. So we know that sales minus the variable cost is gonna give us the contribution margin, which they gave us to be 430,000. So we can underline that, that's gonna be the 430,000. Now, uh, they also gave us the contribution margin percent. I usually put that over here next to it, so it's 0.25. I'm gonna put my cursor back on there. I'm gonna add decimals, home tab, numbers, add decimals, or we can just make it a percent, make it a percent. And then we have some added information. This is all we really need to figure out this variable cost. But the thing with multiple choice questions, they often give us added information. If we were to complete this, we would then say less fixed cost, which we don't know, and that would give us the pre-tax income, basically net income before taxes. Pre-tax income, which we do know to be 128,000, but it's not useful to us. We really only need this information here in order to solve for this item there. So how are we gonna, we need to back into this number. Of course, multiple choice questions often have us back into numbers. And so we gotta back into this and we know that well, if I knew sales, then I know that I can kind of back into this number because sales minus this would equal that. And so how can I get to sales possibly? Well, we can think about the contribution margin calculation. The percent calculation for contribution margin percent is contribution margin divided by sales. So let's write that out because we have three, two of the three variables there and therefore we can solve for what sales should be. So the contribution margin percent, that 25% is calculated as equal to the contribution margin, the 430 divided by sales, which we don't know. So let's plug that in again. And we're gonna say, what do we know? We know we know the 0.25 is here. I'm gonna bake, bake that a percentage again. We know that that equals, and I'll type this in here so you can see how I'm formatting this this time. The contribution margin, we know, that's the 430. So I'm gonna actually type it in there, 430. I'm gonna put the comma, and then I'm gonna select Alt, and enter and that'll go underneath in the same cell 
And then we know we're going to divide by sales. That's the unknown. So I'm just going to put sales that we could put X. And I'm going to highlight the top and I'm going to underline it to show that it's a it's a ratio. And then we could center this if we wanted to do that to make it look nice. We don't have to make it look nice, obviously, for uh, just calculation purposes. But there we have it. And again, this is something might be good to write out by hand. And then we know that the sales over here, if we we're going to solve for sales now, we could see that this is basically a cross multiplication problem by saying that we can put anything over one and we could say okay that's going to be underlined and if we look at it this way because anything over one is itself so i didn't change anything on this side it's still 25 percent because 25 percent divided by one is 25 percent but we can now maybe more easily see that we can cross multiply 25 percent times sales and one times 430 so that would give us this formula we would say then it would be sales times 25 percent is going to be equal to the 430 times 1 cross multiplying which will just give us the 430 thousand and then if we're going to solve for sales we can divide each side by 0.25 to get rid of it so it's a multiplication problem then we need to do the opposite to get rid of it so it's just going to be sales then equals and we're going to say this is equal to the 430 thousand divided by 0.25 and that will give us the sales of 1,720,000. So now we've got sales of 1,720,000. $1, and now the only question is, well, what does sales have to be? Uh, sales minus what equals this? So we've got our, our next calculation of sales less X, the variable cost. We just say variable cost is going to equal the 430,000. I'm going to put a comma there. And so then we got to, then we have to say, well, sales is going to be, we can plug in what sales is, obviously, is 1,720,000. So we can then solve for the variable cost and we can basically see it's going to be a subtraction problem. So we're going to go ahead and do, I'll just do the subtraction problem here. It's going to be the uh, 172,000 minus the 430 thousand and that'll give us the one million uh, two hundred ninety and then if we double check this calculation here then we can say okay well does that make sense does it make sense that if sales is one seven two oh oh minus one hundred uh, one million two ninety thousand does that give us the 430 it does so that makes sense and we can also check that okay what about the four hundred thirty thousand divided by the sales number of 1720 does that work out and it's 25 percent or 0.25 so that works next one says we're going to use the following information to determine the break-even point in dollars and we have the sale the dollar sales the fixed costs and the variable cost so first we need to know what is going to be the break even point formula in dollars let's say and we're going to say that's going to be equal to the fixed cost, I'm going to say fixed cost over the contribution margin percent. And I'll let you, you can kind of derive that, but if you just know this formula, you'll be able to work problems such as this. I'm going to go ahead and center that, and I'll put this like kind of in the middle there. So we're looking for that. So we first we need to find, I'm going to look for this contribution margin percent. We've got the information to do that. We can figure out the contribution margin and then the contribution margin percent. So we know that sales, total sales in dollars uh, were this 580,000. We know that variable costs are going to be this 2175. So that means that the contribution margin, total contribution margin then is going to be sales minus the variable portion, sales minus the variable portion. It's going to be an, an important number because uh, again, the relationship between sales and variable costs is similar in that they change in a similar way. So there we have the, the 362,000. Then we can figure out the contribution margin percent, and that's calculated as the percent, uh, the contribution margin divided by sales. Contribution margin divided by sales, it's not one. Why? Because we need to account for the decimals. So we're gonna go to the home tab and go to the numbers, and we could increase the number of decimals. Now, notice we usually make it to two places, but if I check and say, okay, there's another place out there, and if I keep going, it goes out to three places. So note that if I make it a percentage, it goes back to 63 rounding. And then if I put one more, it's really 62.5. So that's really what it is. If we calculate that, so if you put in 63 
and you're off by a bit, then you might want to try 62.5 and vice versa. So if we put this into our formula, then we have the fixed cost of 214,000. And we're going to say that is alt enter over 62.5%. I'm going to go ahead and underline this. And so we can center this out. I'm actually going to pull this over here. I'll pull this over here. I'm going to center it. And so this, we're just plugging the numbers now into our equation. So there's our equation. And that's going to be equal to, then if we did that calculation, this equals 214,000 divided by 0.625. And that'll give us our 342.4. So the 342.4 then is the break-even point in dollars, then the uh, number of sales, the dollars and sales we would need in order to cover total cost, both variable costs and uh, the fixed cost.